Did it, did it take him this amount of time to just get downstairs? Oh, am I in control now? Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, God. It's creepy. There's a good lad. How does it go? How, hello, sir. That sounds My like associate, down the Sherlock How's Holmes, going? said you might have information for him about... About... Uh, now, what was it? Oh, Jesus, Watson. How useless the are you? The princess, Gav. He was looking for the scuttlebutt on this here princess oh, what we visiting. Exciting goings on. Her bodyguard went missing the first morning after she got here. Nice job to look after a princess's body, isn't it, sir? They say he went out on a town having a go you with the ladies, if you get my meaning. Like as not, he was trapped by some gang of toughs. Otherwise, who'd get the best of him? A proper giant he was, by all accounts. Do I get me coins then, sir? Don't be a miser, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Obliged, I'm sure. Jesus, the accent's bad. I'm guessing now I have to go back up to Sherlock. Apologies if I'm being a bit awkward, but I'm kind of working both the mouse and the uh, and the keyboard controls with one hand to try and uh, keep the microphone up near my mouth. Because as I said, I must, I must be heard. My my brilliant anecdotes must be heard by the people. And there he is. I thought you'd gone up, Holmes, to check on me. Ugh. Please, Watson, leave me to my thoughts. I must concentrate. Now what do you want me to do, then? The fuck? Oh, okay, I'm confused. Walk through. That's probably a whole bunch of people are now raging, going, You fucking idiot. I forgot that, actually, the reason I went out there was not to talk to that annoying little runt. Oh, sorry, I mispronounced it. I, I, I mispronounce my R's and C's sometimes. Do-ho-ho. -ho. Uh, it was to go down to the bookstore and talk to Forever Alone guy. Okay. Let's rock and roll! Let's go to the map! Let's shortcut our way there! Oh shit. Fucking wrong buttons. Like I said, I'm uh, doing a one handed job. Do, doing a two-handed job. Good morning. Uh, no, not one-handed typing. Has your sprain improved? <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Watson. He's slowly showing improvement. What can I do for you? Would you happen to have a book on the, the Maoris? The lovelorn man has got If sprained. I have one available, it would be on that bottom shelf. Although, I'm not sure if I still have that particular book. Please don't trouble yourself. I will look for it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, that was good. Right, okay, we're looking for a book. A book about something, I don't know. I was too busy laughing. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. People at the Earth's End. It is important to realise that the Maoris... It's just it's quite amazing, isn't it, that they just got a book out. Go, oh, there's just a book lying out there about Maoris. Did you hear about that Maori guy who got kidnapped yesterday? It's important to realise that the Maoris create peculiar pictorial writings in the soil in order to express much more than simple artistic emotions. A giant knob, it represents something far different. First, one must realise that dreams are the centre of the Maori spiritual basis. According to ancient tribal dogma, all men live in a vast universal dream world and our individual dreams represent our communion with invisible sacred spirits, which are all around us. When a Maori has a particularly notable dream with prophetic or moral value he draws important moments of his dream in a symbolic fashion on the soil the drawing is interpreted by the tribal shaman who can order a radical change in tribal life depending on what the dream tells him about the future i dream that you should give me money this behavior may be incredible to those born in the civilized world oh, yes civilized <laughs> we sometimes we require substantial fact and cognition, sometimes too much, before changing important aspects of our lives. But our scientific observations over the last ten years reveal several interesting things. Oh god, there's a lot. First and foremost, all, not all Maori dreams do inspire these drawings. Secondly, when drawings are made, few are found to have true symbolic meaning of events that will affect tribal life. Thus, these prophetic occurrences are quite rare. Furthermore, as mentioned earlier, in these wild and inhospitable lands, the interpretation of a dream as prophesying great change 
is unlikely to be a great shock, as nature does little half-heartedly in such places. The shaman is going to understand that if a particular spirit condescended to send a message to his people via a dream, it is a matter of their very survival. Thus we arrive at the following conclusion. Has not our sophisticated Western world dampened these same primitive people's senses in ourselves, deeming them wrongly, in my opinion, lowly and unworthy? Well, this writer is surprisingly liberal for his time. For can we, with all our scientific tools and superior knowledge, foresee the many disasters that hail down on us with the same reliability? Although, does it necessarily mean that they're reliable in, in their prophecy? Anyway, if the apocalypse must happen one day, I am sure that the first warning signs will not be found in our august scientific or governmental corridors, but in the, long, in the lone drawings of a naked and Ill illiterate aborigine in the fine soil of the bush, just outside of Lincoln. Perhaps we will ha he will have time to seek shelter for his people. As for us, question mark, let's just hope that a giant octopus dragon creature doesn't try and destroy us all. Oh, look at the clock. It's about um, seven minutes past twelve. Good day. Goodbye, Doctor. Oh, that was, that was truly necessary, that was. I'm so glad that we got that little bit of conversation. Oh, bloody hell, I'm strafing. I'm strafing! Ooh. Stand over the vent, Marilyn Monroe style. Oh shit! Oh my! I do declare, I'm getting the vapors. Anyway, enough of that arsing around. Back to Baker Street. And also, I don't know what Holmes was busy with, considering that I'd just done everything. Unless we'd gone back in time, which would have been weird, but this is a game of Cthulhu, so probably not impossible. Oh, look, we are subjugating some native peoples, possibly. Ha ha ha. Oh, God. He's just standing there staring at me. Come play with us, Watson. Forever. Jesus. Stop doing that, Holmes. Stop looking oh, into my soul. What on earth did you say to Barnes to put him in such a state? What sort of state? Not now, Watson, although I'm sure this bit of news is most significant. It uh, must wait. Uh, we are piecing together a singular what affair. What? This abduction story is much something? more complex than it appears. As I noted before, our next move is to locate the place of employment for one of the villains who abducted the young Maori. What part of London would such a man call home? Would two kidnappers of the young Maori come? Right, I have no idea about this. Uh, walk through! Apparently the answer is something like the docks or the wharfs of the Thames. So I'll just put the Thames. The Thames. Yes, Watson. Woo. There is little room for doubt. Our man is a bargeman who works at the Thames things? River I'm Wharfs. Sorry, have I he something? is more precisely employed to transport and handle fish oh, brought in by fish. various ships. Our clue. next step is obvious. We must find a cab and make haste to the Thames near the warehouses. To the back cab. Okay, I think I'll uh, end this little bit here. So uh, see you in a bit, guys.